Hey YouTube, um, gonna do something a little bit different here. I've been reading Jamie Elford's tarot book, uh, Tarot for the Inspired Life, is that right? If I have that wrong, I'll put it in the um, description below. But one of the exercises that she presents is the uh, Grand Matrix, and I have one of those laid out here with the wild unknown. And so I thought it would be interesting to kind of go through this and point out things that I've noticed, things that are interesting, or things things that, you know, don't have as much meaning as I expected. Um, in the book, Jamie suggests uh, going through this once you've laid all the cards out, going through row by row and column by column. And I'm not going to talk through everything, but um, I thought I would talk about some of what I found. One of the reasons that I decided to use this deck is that the guidebook doesn't really have a lot about the actual pictures and why they were chosen. And so I was curious if there were going to be any Easter eggs of like interesting symbolism or patterns. Um, and I would say not a ton, but I did find some things. Um, so if we start up here with the majors, it does seem like the animals or the nature elements that were chosen for the majors were fairly kind of one off. I mean, they were each seemed to be chosen because they represent that specific card, not uh, to do any particular like grouping or sequence. Um, but you do see some pairs for sure. You have the two big cats for the magician and the high priestess. You have the trees for the empress and the emperor. Um, here the chariot and strength, the horse and the lion seem kind of related to me. Interestingly, the moon and star in this deck are a little more parallel looking than the moon and sun, which is an interesting thing to think about, I think, with the meanings of the cards, like the kind of hope and healing and then that deeper, more confused energy being a pair. Um, and then I really like this death and temperance, that skeletal bird, and then you have the kind of rising from the flames energy um, there. Now in the minors, uh, one thing I did notice, I don't know if it was intentional, I bet it was. Um, one thing I did notice is the way the color goes through the suit. Um, so for example, if you look at the wands, really like the brightest card in the wand suit is the ace. Um, two and three are also very bright, four. But then as you move through, you'll notice that you have a little less color. So none in the five um you've got the butterfly and the flame and then that rainbow lightning bolt for the eight but then the nine and the ten are really a lot less color so that kind of makes sense with the way that the suit progresses um similar in the swords um where there is some color here there's some color here as you go through there's a little less color and then you get to the end and there's really none so that makes a lot of sense um i also liked with the wands in particular the way the wands themselves are used so you have like the two touching together you have that very clear like stability of the three and the four and then the breaking apart of the five and then when you get to six and seven it's like you have this kind of brambles but with the butterfly rising up and then the way they're kind of separated out for this one light to shine through, um, moving t through until you get to the very end and they're just sort of discombobulated again. So re recalling back to the five. Um, I thought that was kind of cool. And then um, if you look at the cups and the pinnacles by contrast, the pinnacles don't really follow this as much, but the cups, you've got a lot of color at the beginning of the suit and then kind of dulling out around the four and the five which makes sense those are sort of tougher energies and then coming back in again until you get to the very colorful ten of cups one of my favorite ten, ten, tens of cups um, with that rainbow light pouring between and the pinnacles sort of follow it I mean you definitely have a very colorful nine and ten you have the more muted seven and eight but I would kind of expect the four and the five to be muted if you're going by that pattern, so it's not exactly the same. Um, I do like the way the roses, though, are used from card to card there. Um, again, like they're, it, I don't think it's random, but the 
there's not necessarily like one nature element throughout. So you've got a butterfly, you've got a mountain, um, you have roses, so it kind of varies. But um, then if we look over here to our court families, um, so this is cool. These are the court families. Each family is a specific animal. And one thing I noticed here is that there does seem to be a kind of similarity to the way each animal interacts with the symbol of its element. So if you look at the daughters, which are the pages in a traditional deck, you can see that they're kind of gently interacting with the element. So we have the serpent kind of twined around the branch, owl just sort of neutrally standing on the sword there, the floating um, swan with the cup above their head, and then the rainbow there um, for the pentacles. And then when you get to the suns or the knights, it's like a little more intense or a little more like really interacting in the wands and the swords, especially sort of in the cups, not so much interacting, but you can see that like sense of movement in the colors coming up from the cups. A little less so again in the pentacles, although you do have, I do feel like that pose of that pentacle just above and the moon is very, like it's something. I don't know how to describe it, but it's something. Um, and then with the mother, you have a kind of protective energy. So you have the way, the way that snake is twined around the wand feels very protective to me. The way that owl is on the sword, the kind of wing position there with the mother of cups. And then here, not so much with the element, but you do have that baby deer kind of in a protective position. And then finally, when you get to the fathers, it really feels like an activation of the element. So, um... Here you've got that lightning bolt. Um, you've got the, I love the way the sword is black in all of them until it gets to the father and then it's a rainbow. Um, a little like less so with the father here, but then father of pentacles, again, the like rainbow activation of the antlers is really cool. So, I mean, I would say, I think that there are definite symbolic artistic choices here, themes. There are also places where there isn't really a pattern, but laying it out this way was fun. I would recommend it. Uh, if you do this, show us your deck. And yeah, I will, um, I'll do this for some more decks. So comment below if there's a particular one that you'd like me to cover. And otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe.